So there's another Predator movie out. Do we need another one? And is this one any good? Well, I'm about to let you know. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Rewind, Relive, and Review. I'm Rick, this is the show where I talk about movies, music, and television. And this one is a movie, but it's on streaming television. This is yet another sequel in the Predator franchise. This one's called Prey. Now this movie was released on Hulu, not in theaters. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a lower tier movie just because it went to streaming. So instead of calling it Predator 5 or 6 or 7, whatever number we're on, they call it Prey. It came out this year in 2022, it's an American science fiction horror film directed by Dan Trachtenberg. It was written by Patrick Allison and based on the Predator franchise by Jim Thomas and John Thomas. Technically, it's the fifth installment in the franchise. For whatever reason, those last few just seemed like there was so many more than that. Now, what sets this apart is it's a prequel to the first four films and takes place with a primarily Native American cast. The film stars Amber Midthunder, Dakota Beavers, Michelle Thrush, Storm Kip, Julian Black Antelope, and Dane Deligro. Now the story revolves around Nauru, a skilled Comanche warrior protecting her tribe from a highly evolved alien predator that hunts humans for sport fighting against the wilderness and fur trackers to keep her people safe. Now I'm not going to give too many details on the film. I'll give you some technical specs and everything. Don't think the film is light on plot. It does have a driving plot and yes, it is so much better than the other sequels. I mean, Obviously, I'm a fan of the first Predator movie. Predator 2 wasn't bad. Eh, the third and fourth one, eh, eh. But with this one, things are a little bit different. The fact that it's set in the 1700s isn't the only thing that makes it different. Your lead person in the cast is female this time around. That's different, and that's a much appreciated and she isn't the typical, oh, I'm scared running around female. From the get-go, she's ready for action. Now this film is rated on Rotten Tomatoes 93% out of 168 critics. Reviews are very positive, with an average of 7.7 .7 out of 10. Now Prey doesn't try to go overboard, over the top, like most films and sequels do. It does have some uh, violence, gore, and uh, there's some intense scenes, but it's not overwrought with profanity, sex, and nudity. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's good, clean science fiction slash horror fun. Again, remember, just because it went straight to streaming doesn't mean it's a lower tier movie. It's beautifully shot. It was shot in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and it has a runtime of one hour, 39 minutes, it is in Dolby Atmos, and it has an aspect ratio of 2.39 to 1, your average widescreen movie. So in conclusion, for one thing, I'm glad that the streaming companies give us good alternative movies when we don't have time or can't make it out to the theaters. This was a good movie. I believe that you should see it. Wipe the last couple of Predator movies out of your mind before going into it, and you're going to be just fine. This one fits right up there with the first Predator and the second one. So if you guys have seen it, or you're going to see it after doing so, drop me a comment, let me know what you think about the movie. Let me know where you think it ranks among all the other Predator movies as well. So in conclusion, Prey. Check it out. It's a good movie. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. While you're here, 
be sure and check out another one of my videos right over here and make sure that you like, share, and most importantly, subscribe right here. That way you don't miss any other episodes. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. And I'll see you again soon.